Hello, River of Life and Greenwood Family Church. Thank you for stopping by and being with us this service. We are so excited. Happy New Year from River of Life from Pastor Randy and Gina, my husband and I. We just want to extend Happy New Year to you. We pray blessings upon you this year. Amen. We're just so excited to see what God has in store for us, for the redemption, for the salvations. Amen. For reconciliation that he has in mind for us and our church. Amen. We are excited to see God's hand move over the lives that um, he is called back. Amen. That he is calling back to himself. And so we just thank you once again for being a part of this and being a part of this journey. Nobody saw this coming, virtual platform church, but we're just so grateful. Amen. We're so grateful that you've been able to stick around with the journey with us. And we just come before the Lord with expectant hearts for this year. Uh, you know, regardless of what it looks like, regardless of things that may come, we know that God is in control. He sits on the throne. Amen. And so we just believe full of confidence and full of hope. Amen. For the things that he has, not just for us as individuals, but in our marriage, in our home. Amen. Um, in our cities, in our communities, wherever you're at. Amen. We just pray that God would just have his way, his perfect will done in your life. Amen. That he would continue to use you this year as a vessel, as a beacon of light to reach the lost. Amen. To reach the lost. And that's what we're here for, to reach out for those souls that need him. Amen. And so we just, uh, we're just looking forward so much for this year. We know that he has amazing things in store for us. Amen, church. Before we get started, I do want to give you some announcements for the month of January. We're really excited for this new year, like I mentioned. We do have our ministries available to everybody and anybody. Our youth and young adult ministry connected. Youth is still going strong. You can find us on Instagram, um, as well as we use a Zoom platform. Um, just to gather together different days of the week. Uh, reach out to us if you're, if you're interested in that ministry down below, and we'll definitely give you that information. We have our kids are cool. We are just super pumped to be able to pour in to our little ones every Sunday. It's through this channel on this platform, YouTube, and you could see that posted every Sunday at 11 o'clock, and that's for your little ones to be blessed. Amen. Uh, we have some few things going on this month, uh, one of which is our men's discipleship. Uh, the men are getting together on January 23rd. January 23rd at 10 a.m. on Zoom. Um, it's a great time for the men just to gather together to encourage one another, uplift one another, hear what's going on in each other's heart. A amen. And just really be that pillar for one another in that time. Uh, for the women, we do have our... Um, bow fellowship going on january 30th also at 10 a.m also on zoom we just look forward to gaining uh getting together with you ladies and just fellowship fellowshipping encouraging one another being there for one another uplifting one another it's a blessed time amen so with that i just pray that you would just join all the things that apply to you amen um we just love we love hearing uh, back from you whether it's through this platform through text um through the time we get together on zoom we love to gather together amen even though we can't do it physically we love that we could use these platforms to do that we love you be blessed Saints, it is time to bless the Lord. Thank you so much. Once again, we say it every month, but I never get tired of it because we sincerely mean it. Thank you so much for just pouring into this ministry for your generosity, for your obedience above all things, you know, giving unto the Lord as we are called to do. And so we just thank you. Thank you for just believing in this church, believing in this ministry and the vision that God has placed inside our hearts to follow through through this uh, in this ministry. Amen. So we just thank you once again. If it's your first time, welcome. And if you would like to go ahead and partner with us in any way, um, there are three ways that you can give to the ministry. Amen. The first of which is Cash App. That's at R-O-L-C-C-S-G-V. Uh, the second way is Venmo. And you could send that to River of Life Christian Church. And then the third way is Zelle, and you can send that to R-O-L-C-C-S-G-V at yahoo.com. Either way we give, we receive it, and we just want to say thank you so much once again for your generosity, just believing in this ministry, backing us up in prayer, uh, sowing seed, amen, into this ministry. We just want to thank you. We so appreciate it, and we're humbled by it. Good evening, uh, my beautiful church, both River of Life as well as Greenwood Community Church. Um, 
here I am, I'm back, amen. I just want to uh, send my thanks on behalf of my wife and myself to um, every single one of you that are out there that have been praying for us. Believe me, we truly have felt your prayers. This uh, time has been uh, very testing. It has been a time of uh, building our relationship with God. And I just want to thank every single one of you that are out there that have uh, prayed for my entire family. We so appreciate and covet those prayers. And uh, we just thank you for all that you have done during this time. Amen. Here we are at our midweek service, our Wednesday night service. And I just want to take this opportunity also uh, to offer a word of prayer uh, to the Lord and ask that he be here with us. And also, um, I also want to pray for the uh, Hol Holguin family who uh, our congregation uh, recently lost a beautiful, beautiful sister in the Lord, Sister Yvonne, uh, to COVID. And uh, we also want to just pray for their family right now, that God would just watch over them and be with them. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor, Father, this night, for all that you're doing, Lord. Father, we pray that you would anoint the word, Father, that it would come out with clarity, with boldness, that it would be implanted, Father, through the seed of your word into our hearts and that it would take good ground, Lord God. And Father, right now we lift up to you the, the, the uh, Holguin family, Lord God, that you would touch them right now, that you would begin to give them peace, comfort, and strength during this time, and that you would show them, Father, how near you are to them, Lord God. And Father, for all those, Father, even those in our congregation, even right now who are Father, battling against this terrible disease. Father, we lift them up to you right now, asking that you would touch them. Each and every one, Father, you know them by name, that you would just have your way and bring total and complete healing. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen and amen. You know, church, I, uh, I have gone through my wife and I uh, uh, a lot this last month. For many of you know, uh, that are out there that, that my wife and I both uh, came down with uh, the virus. We came down with COVID. And uh, I thank God that uh, the Lord has brought us through that. Um, we didn't suffer from any of the respiratory problems, which I thank him for, amen. Neither my wife or myself. But we just want to uh, just share with you that um, our heart goes out to every single one of you that are out there that have a family member that have uh, loved ones or neighbors or whoever it might be that has uh, contracted this this terrible terrible virus that we are standing together amen as the body of Christ I also want to thank uh, the leadership uh, of our congregation for all the men and women of God that have uh, come together and have been there for our family uh, both through prayer and uh, sending us meals. And uh, I mean, it's just a, an amazing thing to see the body of Christ working together as we are. And I wanted to take a little different uh, approach to tonight's message. I just wanted to share with my heart, from my heart. Um, right now, I think the, the, the most difficult thing that uh, I am facing, as, as you know, maybe uh, I, I had... Uh, severe back problem uh, three weeks prior to me getting COVID and uh, it kind of has left me a little shaky. Uh, I'm doing well. I'm getting strength back through all those beautiful meals that you are all sending us. But um, both me and my wife, I think the, 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 the most difficult thing to face right now is, is the fatigue that you experience after having this virus. Um, Again, we thank you all and uh, appreciate every single one of you for your love, for your support of this ministry. Um, church, I, I just want you to know that uh, we are praying for those at the river and also for Greenwood that have and that are uh, dealing with either loss or um, uh, the virus itself that together we're gonna to make it through and we're gonna see God do some wonderful things, amen. 
And going through this uh, time in our lives, one of the things that I really wanted to share with you is how this virus, it comes, but it's not just a physical attack that comes against your body. It's also a, a spiritual attack, and it's also an emotional attack where uh, the enemy will just come and uh, feed your mind, and he will just try to come and set your mind all in different directions and trying to get your mind off of the goodness of God and the, the power of the Holy Spirit and his healing power. And... Um, Yes, it does come with, with, with physical issues, um, but it also comes with emotional and spiritual issues. And I wanted to share with you just a little bit from my heart today. You know, as both my wife and I were uh, facing this, um, it, was, it was really difficult because at the time, I had found out, uh, in fact, in my last recording, I had a, a cough and, and a very raspy throat, and that was the beginning of, of my symptoms. And my wife uh, didn't experience anything like that at all, but uh, a few days later is when she started to experience her uh, symptoms. So we basically were apart from each other. And um, we have our children in the home and, and you know, they kind of had to go with my, my son, Randy, and um, uh, Devin isolated himself, and Brienne isolated herself. And for those of you that don't know, uh, my daughter, Brienne, she's, uh, she's 29 years old, and uh, she has Down syndrome. And um, one of the problems is uh, that she had when she was younger was, you know, respiratory with her lungs. She had pneumonia, and uh, she had bronchitis as, as a young child. and. Uh, so all these thoughts are going through your mind. You know, you're trying to um, get well and stay positive. And as a parent, every single one of you know this. As a grandparent, uh, as a father, a mother, whatever position you hold, that you don't much think about yourself, especially when your wife or your children are at risk. And all I could think about was, I don't care how I'm feeling. All I want to do is make sure my wife and my children, my daughter, are fine. And uh, halfway in through this uh, fight that we were going through, um, we experienced my daughter, Brienne, uh, developing a cough. And that was one of the first symptoms. And so we immediately try to get ourselves better, and but it's just something that you could try to do, but it's just there. And um, through this time, we were facing adversity head on. And when I say head on, I'm talking about right in your face, going through a time in your life where the enemy is bringing adversity against you he is trying to attack you physically, spiritually, emotionally, and um, your mind can just go and, and begin to play games. And um, one of the things that uh, my wife and I, we, we, we had to do was to come together and uh, to recognize the attack. And church, that's exactly what this is. What we are facing even right now is an attack, not just against the body of Christ, but literally against the entire globe. Um, I don't understand where people talk and say that this virus isn't real. Um, I know firsthand that it is very real. From the time of, I think, uh, beginning of, uh, or, or excuse me, the end of October through even now, I cannot tell you how many people had faced adversity, trials, this extreme attack against their lives with this disease, with the enemy, how he's coming at them. It's real 
It's out there. It's something that I've had to deal with every single day since the uh, end of, uh, of uh, October. And one of the things that I've seen is that how the enemy would love to use this as something to break down each and every one of us that are out there. Now, I think this virus has uh, affected each and every one of us in different ways. If maybe you have not contracted, and I thank God for that, have not contracted this virus and you just hear or uh, maybe see and it just hasn't touched you in a personal way, maybe you won't look at it as the way that I look at it or the way that someone who has lost a loved one will look at it because it's personal. It's something that is very devastating, that brings adversity and tries to tear us down. There are those who have experienced uh, maybe uh, the, the virus, but haven't gone through the, uh, the symptoms. Maybe you, uh, you know, were a person that did not contract any of the symptoms and praise God for that. Maybe you were like uh, my wife and I, where we totally lost uh, taste and smell and we had fever and fatigue and uh, body aches. And I know that there are many families even now in our congregation that I want to bring a word of encouragement to you, to speak something into your life, to help us to focus on what it is that God is doing during this time. It's not something that comes easy, especially like I said, when you see your family, your children having to face this. But it's something that I believe that God wants us to hear this night. I believe that God wants us to recognize, and I just want to take a few minutes tonight to, to, to share with you and, and to tell you that God is with us regardless of what the enemy might say, whatever he might try to bring. You know, I, I looked in scripture and I think it's really important that as we face adversity, as we face difficulty in our life, that we look and we're able to reflect back on the word of God because the word of God is what brings us the strength and the hope. When you find your heart so broken because of loss, when you find your emotions all over the place, when you miss the touch of your grandchildren and your children, I know that firsthand and it, it, it really breaks me up because for those of you that know, my family is very, very close. And to not be able to see them or be with them, I'm sure many of us understand that and, and feel it. There's an emptiness that the enemy tries to bring. There's an isolation. And he uses these adversities of life to try to separate us from what it is that God is trying to do and what it is that he wants to do. Now, I know many of us have that question that's out there, and I know that many of us are thinking, you know, but I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. Why are we going through this? Why do we have to face this? I think it's something that we all ask ourselves, but I think we need to be real and truthful with ourselves. Because we are Christians, it doesn't mean that you and I will never face adversity in our life. In fact, the word of the Lord says that you will suffer persecution and you will go through times of trial but the word of God says how we are called to be of good cheer and I know that that's difficult but it's something that a promise that was given to us through the word of God and it's a promise that we have to reflect back on grab a hold of and hold on as tight as we can because of what the enemy will try to do during this time. You know, I think of the Word of God in Hebrews, and that's going to be where the, the scriptures that we're going to be in our text tonight. It's in Hebrews chapter 10, and I wanted us to focus on this tonight, and that's this, how to keep pressing ahead 
in the face of adversity. To press ahead, to keep going, to not allow the enemy to stop us dead in our tracks. You know, just because we fall down, church, just because we might get ourselves scuffed up, just because we might have some lingering effect, it doesn't mean that God has left us. In fact, what we need to do is turn to the Word of God to recognize just how He is right by our side. You know, church, there are times in our life when we get to the point of where we say, I can't take this anymore. I've had enough. I quit. I think many of us have been at that place. I think many of us have maybe uttered those same words. Maybe right now you are at a place of where you are battling this disease and you don't know what tomorrow holds, but your faith and your trust is holding on to God and his word and his promises where he says, maybe we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds our tomorrow. That's our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I know that sometimes we try to use this fake it till you make it. How many of you have heard that one before? Where you say to yourself, you know, I've got to trust God. I've got to believe God. But deep down inside your heart, you're saying, I've tried this and it's not working. You know, church, the early believers, the body of Christ, when they came to salvation, when they came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, how beautiful it would have been had we never heard of the trials, the persecution, everything that they had endured. But in the Word of God, it's recorded. In the Gospels, it's recorded how they themselves experienced test and trial. I think what the Spirit of God is trying to tell us today is that we need to hold on to what it is that he is doing. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32 says this. Hebrews 10, 32. It says, but recall the former days in which after you were illuminated. In other words, after you were enlightened, after you came to the knowledge, remember this, remember what took place that the enemy was not going to sit to try and allow what God had deposited, the faith, the courage. The enemy was going to bring adverse situations inside of their lives, and he will do the same to each and every one of the, us. Listen to this. You endured a great struggle with suffering. But you see, the Word of God says that he was or she was illuminated. She was uh, brought to a place of understanding where she wasn't ignorant or he wasn't ignorant to the things that was going on or the promises that God had spoken to their life. Please reflect back on today and know the promises that he has spoken. Maybe you're not seeing it right now. Maybe you aren't feeling it right now. But that doesn't change the fact that God in his word says that he will never leave you nor forsake you. See, we can apply the same truths in our lives today. No matter what we are going through, we know that God is right there by our side. Listen to this. Here's what he told them also in verses number 35 and 36. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence. You see, you and I are confident in Christ our Lord. We're confident because you go to any grave, you go to any tomb, and all you're going to find is a body, bones, and decay. But when we go to the tomb of Christ, there it is empty. Why? Because of the confidence that we have that he is resurrected. Because he is God because he is our savior and because the words that he has spoken have resonated in our life and have brought change you know church 
uh, my son Randy, he shared this last weekend, and, and, and if you didn't listen to the message, I pray that you go back. God has a way of doing something when you totally don't expect it. And he did a mighty miracle for our family, something that we had been praying for, for for years and years and years. It was something that we didn't even expect to happen when it happened or the way that it happened. But I'm here to tell you, church, today that when you least expect it, God will move on your behalf. Adversity comes and tries to say, don't believe it, doubt, give up, throw the towel in. But our faith says, hold on, keep pressing in, keep going after the prize, keep going towards the direction. Listen to what uh, verse number 36 has to say. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Endurance. Endurance is simply this, the ability to withstand hardship or adversity. But you see, it's standing on not your strength, but the strength of God that he so freely gives to each and every one of us. I said that I covet the prayers. To hear or to receive a text or a call or a card that said, Pastor, we are praying for you. We know that you and Sister Gina have gone through a, a difficult time, but we are praying for you. You don't know by hearing those words, we are praying for you. Especially God showing us how he moved through our prayer. And today I'm here to speak life into you, that you have need of endurance, the ability to withstand hardship through this 21 days of fasting that our church is doing right now, to get in your word, to allow these 21 days to build you up, to say, I have need of change. I have need of of faith in my life because right now I feel so faithless. I'm trying to believe. You see, sometimes we just need to reach out. Sometimes just sending a text and saying, hey, listen, can you come in agreement with me? Because I'm not feeling very good right now. You see, that's what the body of Christ is and does. You know, so many people think that we could be mind readers, but thank God we're not. Thank God we're not mind readers to know every thought that every man, woman, and child have of us. Let's be real. But what we can do is when someone says, this is what I'm in need of right now. I feel weak. I feel like everything is just sucked out of me. Friend, I'm saying right here to you now, just as it says, you have need of endurance so that the will of God may bring the promise that he has for you to stand. What's God's promise? God's promise is he will see you through. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That his blood has healing power. But recognize, as the word says, not my will be done, Father, but yours. You know, sometimes we could be selfish. And we could look back and we could say, you know, I, I don't care. This is what I want regardless of not truly thinking about the individual or what it is that God's trying to do. You see, friend, God knows the past, the present, and the future. And all he has is good for his sons and daughters. To release your heart to him and say, Father, I trust no matter what adversity comes my way, I know that you will be there with me. Adversity. We're using this word a lot, but what does it mean? It means simply this, a state or an instance of serious or continued difficulty or misfortune. In other words, it's under attack. It's what the enemy will do to bring adversity, trials, 
situations into our life. And we need to recognize that this is a scheme. It's a continuous attack, especially even now. Let me share this with you. See, people who are walking close with the Lord still experience adversity in their walk with God and even in this world. There is no one that is exempt. In other words, in other words there is no one that can say, I will never face this. Can I tell you something? There still is going to be death. And every single one of our families, not just by COVID, but in life, will have to experience that. We live in a sinful world. We live in a decaying body. Every one of us will have to face this at one time in our life. And to be able to reflect back on it and say, you know what, Lord, I know you will never leave me nor forsake me. Look what Psalms chapter 34, verse 19 says. It says this, the righteous person may have troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. We will face troubles. We will encounter hardship. But God says that the righteous person, those that are right with Christ, not in righteousness in ourselves, but righteous with Christ, will endure. We will see the promise of God. Amen. You know something? God wants to transform your life through adversity. This is the second point. God wants to transform your life through adversity. Amen? To transform, to change the character or the condition, to convert through things in life that we face. God has a way of changing us, bringing us closer to what the enemy would love to use adversity to push us further away. The Lord is developing character in each and every one of us. There are things right now that God is taking out that he is placing in. Allow him through adverse times to develop who he desires you to be in Christ. The Apostle Paul, a man who knew suffering, wrote about this in the letter in Romans. He wrote about it to the Roman believers. He, he, he talked about how in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 to 5, it says this, And not only that, but we also glory, listen to this, we glory in tribulation, knowing that tribu tribu tribulation produces perseverance. I want to be able to persevere, but I need to encounter tribulation. And perseverance character and character hope. All this stems from adversity, the things we face, and allowing God to build us. It's not something that we like to hear, church, but it's something that we need to hear knowing that our Father will see us through every situation. And the last thing tonight is this. We can take heart and remember that our suffering and our trials are temporary. Temporary. Listen to this. What is temporary? Lasting for a limited time. In other words, it's not going to go on forever. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10 says this. But may the God of all grace, who called us. You are called of God today, friend. Leader, Christian, babe in Christ. The Lord has called you today. He called you to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have suffered a while, listen to this, perfect, established strength will come to every single one as God's word settles in and upon you. To keep pressing in, to not allow adverse times in our life to bring us down, but to say, adversity may come, but let it come because I know that my Lord has never left me. 
I say this to you today. Reach out. Call someone. Follow up. Send your love. Send your prayers. Someone right now is going through something in your life or their life that maybe you have come out of. And you can speak that word of encouragement. You can speak the word of how God's spirit is leading and guiding. How you can share and say that God seen me through this most difficult time in my life. And most of all, you could say this to them, that it's just for a while. Because God will see us through all that we face. And it's just temporary. Church, again, I thank you for all that you have done. I continue to get strength every day. I continue to lift you up. I continue to thank you for the love and the support, both prayerfully, financially, that you offer to this ministry. Tomorrow, if we could, we would be able, church, because of your love and your support, to be able to go right back into our church, to not have to say, well, we can't because no, it's because of your faithfulness, because your love that you have offered to this ministry by being here for one another. And I say this to you, let's continue reaching out. If you've never asked Christ to be Lord of your life, say this prayer, say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I ask you to come into my heart, take my life. There is so much adversity that I face right now. But I know through your word, it's just temporary and you will see me through. I thank you for forgiving me of my sin and being the savior of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. And for you saints that are out there, like I said, continue to reach out to each other, call each other. Remember, if you have or facing a situation, please call, please message us so that we in turn can cover you in prayer, love, and God's word. Amen. Church, have a beautiful rest of your evening. I love you. My wife loves you. And together, we are going to make it through this time. Amen. God bless you all tonight. Amen. Church, thank you so much. We pray that service blessed your heart. Amen. We just you pray that God used it to speak to you, to touch you, to challenge you, to stir you, to awaken something inside of you. Amen. So we just pray that you would just receive fully that word and that message. Um, we just want to encourage you some few things. If it's your first time joining us and you're wanting to stick around, welcome to the River of Life family. Jump on in because the water's fine. Um, that's what we like to say here at our church. And so there's a few ways you could actually do that. Amen. And you could, one of which is subscribing uh, to the channel. Another thing is liking our video, letting us know down below with comments um, how God spoke to you in this word. Amen. And then another thing is hitting that notification, that little bell button. Amen. Um, just so you get notified as to when we upload things, not just in this channel, but also for our kids, our cool ministry so that your little ones also get spiritually fed. Amen. So either way, we just thank you so much for drop, dropping by and joining us um, this service. Thank you for your fellowship. And thank you for just being here, a part of this ministry and this vision. We just pray blessings upon you. We love you. We miss you terribly. And until we meet again, thank you, church.